Hello and welcome to sourdough bread. This is something that I, I absolutely love. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, and you form a huge relationship. It's like having a little, a little pet. Anyway, I just want to say to you, so Stephen's a very keen baker. He's been baking every day his sourdough breads, I don't know, for a good while now anyway. I'm really experimenting. I'm not much of a baker. I don't bake much at home. So I'm going to ask the questions representing you guys uh, and try to decipher what is sourdough bread. And, and we're going to show you how to make a mother and we're going to show you how to bake a sourdough loaf. So when I'm talking about sourdough bread, I'm talking about making 100% wholemeal sourdough. We're Brilliant. using a wholemeal spelt. You could use wholemeal wheat or wholemeal rye, whatever grain you prefer. Okay, first question, Steve. What is a mother? And what's a mother so got to mother do with sourdough? Okay, back to basics. What is sourdough bread? Sourdough bread is taking traditional bread, bread which is normally flour, some form of rising agent being a yeast. Traditionally, or traditionally all rising agent was sourdough culture, but now in modern day society, we use commercial yeast, which is kind of artificially produced in a lab, and that kind of puffs up a bread really, really quickly, whereas sourdough, generally I'll leave it proof for six to 12 hours, or even 24 proof, meaning leaving it to rise before it even goes into the oven. Very cool, so this is a proofing bread, is it? Yeah, and this, the mother culture will be your wild yeast. So it's using no, that wild was my next question, our... and let me, okay, let me, don't sorry. be jumping ahead of there. Stephen, darling. So what is a mother and what's a mother got to do a with? A mother culture, okay, so let's make our own mother culture. So here's one here, this one I've probably had for about six months now and I feed it daily. This is like having a little pet. It's my good friend. Let's call her Ursula. Let's curse her Ursula, Ursula. not her of Oliver. Okay. Um, okay, so this is how I will make a mother culture. I so will this take, is starting from scratch. This is starting from scratch. So this is for anyone out there that's interested in sourdough, this is how you make a mother. So you get a jam jar, any type of old jar you have, you will get whatever flour you want to make this out of. So I'm you, using 100% wholemeal spelt. You could use 100% wholemeal wheat, 100% wholemeal rye. Okay. Or could you use white if you were into just making white? You could use white, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna put in about a quarter a jar of flour. Boom. Beautiful. Beautiful. Next, we're gonna get water. So, boom. We're gonna cover this in water. Just literally cover it, just literally cover it. We're gonna mix it around so there's no lumpiness. We don't want it too thick and we don't want it too thin. To me, that's a little bit, if it's more moist, it will attract more yeast quicker. So generally, I will always air mine on a slightly more moister side. Okay, I'm gonna ask a really important question, Stephen. So what are the benefits of eating sourdough and why should we one, be interested in one, sourdough? People with yeast allergies can often take sourdough bread. Okay, that doesn't sound that attractive to me. I don't have a yeast. Because, because you're using wild yeast, it will partially digest the bread for you, making it a lot easier to digest. Also, the yeast are full of a lot of probiotics, which are good for your so stomach. So it's healthier for me. Healthier for you, yeah. yes. Easier to digest. And, you can, and two, you can control the flour and ingredients that are going into your bread. And three, there's a wonderful harmony and relationship and something so beautiful about making your bread. And by having a mother culture, it means you have to feed it daily. And as a result, you're baking bread daily. Stephen bakes bread every day with his son, Theo. They yeah. kind of tend to bake bread every day. And, even and, and it really doesn't it. take long. They and just, and like we get in and we feed our bread and it's like feeding the pet, you know, and it's a good Feed lap. your bread or feed your mother? Well, feed the, the mother culture. Okay, yeah. boom. So I've mixed that, boom. Can you see it like that? And literally, I will leave that for about five to seven so see days. see it, Johnny? Can you get a shot in there? I won't even feed it, I will just leave it. Just leave it, and leave so it's it. it's really just like, kind of like lumpy brown water. Yeah, just leave it. Leave it and neglect it. Neglect it for a week, come back and go, oh wow, there's bubbles in it. And you'll smell it and it's gonna taste, Gives it'll taste a little bit brewery. Oh, a it bit. does smell, it does smell like, it does smell like alcohol or like hopsy or Yeah, hopsy. Alcoholic. So I'll take that now. Okay, so now to feed my bread, what I will do. So now I have what, what one would call a culture. It may not be that active. The way you can see how active the culture is, is the amount of bubbles going through it. Active means the amount it's gonna raise your bread. Yeah. So we have our mother culture here. So I'm gonna, one, I'm gonna show you how to feed it. So to feed it, I'm gonna pour half of the culture out with which I can make a bread. And now I'm gonna just feed it. It's okay. breakfast time, my little darling. Okay, so here he goes. Feeding time. Feed it. Okay, boom. So we're going to put an equal part, equal part flour. So about, so the same, just the same amount of kind of flour. So it's just getting the same kind of bits again. It's getting used to the same amount of food. A little bit of water. And again, you don't have to be too, you know, some people will measure theirs and be very kind of clinical about it. I tend to just feed freestyle. it as I feel. Freestyle. That's kind of your style though, isn't it? Yeah. And just mix it through. Captain Freestyle. Yes. Freestyle and Steve. Um, Beautiful. Bump. Beautiful. Okay, so that's our fed. You know, 
If you do live in a warm climate, you will have to feed it kind of twice daily. If you are going on holidays, put it in the fridge, you will keep it for a week. And you don't have to feed it for a you week. You don't have to feed it for a week. Or give it to your friend, give it to your neighbours. Yeah. Anyway, right, right. So how do I make a bread? bread? Okay, boom. So I have my mother culture there, also known as a levain. Levain for French for rising agent. Um, so I'll take that there and I'll decide, okay, I want to make a bread. I want to make a two pound loaf tin. This is a two pound loaf tin. So I'm going to take that there. I'm going to pour in flour. I tend to freestyle everything. You know, you can do it whatever way you want, but I'm going to add in flour. Brilliant. I've probably added in that 200. Much. That much, 200 grams. Okay, I'm going to add in a good pinch of salt. Boom. It's a nice pinch, yeah. Beautiful. Now I'm going to add in water. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating, uh, I'm taking my mother culture and I'm creating a levain. So I'm creating kind of a bigger mother culture, if you will. So I'm going to mix this. And again, I don't want it too moist and I don't want it too dry. You can see right now it's too dry. And this might sound weird to you, but you'll, you'll really get it as soon as you start playing with it. You'll it's a very organic process like it is. I, I know myself, I don't bake, but when I'm in baking bread, there's an instinct. I think it's, maybe it's passed in over years or whatever. It's in our that DNA. That if you can switch off your thinking brain and just get down with your bread. You'd probably normally use your hands or would you use a spoon? I tend to use a spoon because I tend to make quite a, quite a wet dough. And the reason why I make it wet is that, say sourdough bread, another, this is in my other sales pitch of sourdough bread, I say a traditional commercial yeast bread, within a day or two, it's kind of, it's only good for toast. Oh, this it's is going to dry out too one, much. Yeah. But when you do make your own bread, like this one here, because I made it quite moist, I'll get at least a week out of this, this will stay fresh. Wow. You got that? Yeah, very And good. you can control cool. the moistness of it. And because it's called sourdough bread, it has kind of a slightly sour acidic taste. But, but you it's can see beautiful. the way it's only, it's literally only got three ingredients. There's a wholemeal flour, so some kind of whole grain flour, there's water, and there's the sourdough culture. So it's really authentic, natural, pure goodness. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that sit for about six hours. You know, I'm going to go off about my day, and when I come back and I'm in the kitchen and I'm kind of cooking, I go, oh yeah, I must, must get that bread on again. So I'll come back to that. So he's been sitting for six hours. He's going to be more like my mother culture in six hours. He's going to be bubbly, and it's like, oh great, I got a big mother culture. Time to turn it into a big loaf of bread. So again, I'm going to add in flour. I'm going to add in about 150 grams. Uh, and you can change your grain, and you can change your flour. Just always keep the same flour with your mother culture. So you could just start another culture, is that what you're saying? Yeah, but they're start another mother. So this one is a little too, too dry for me. I like to air on the wet side. Um, okay, will you oil that tin? Yeah. So Dave's going to grease the tin, just put a little bit of oil around it just so that we can get it out really so easy. So a little oil, and I'm just going to put a little bit of oil and yeah. get a bit mix of mix around, yeah. That's ready to go. So I'm going to put that in my loaf tin. You know, if you did have a little... Um, Banaton, you know those lovely baskets, you could leave oh, it to proof yeah, in that. Cool. And if you don't, you could just use one like this. Because I'm using spelt at his lower levels of gluten, I'm going to pour it in here. My beautiful brother has greased it already. Thank you, David. Oh, you're very welcome, Mr. Flynn. I'm going to leave him now to proof. To proof means to be left in a warm environment, typically around 20 degrees. And generally, I leave it proof for about 12 hours. So what I often do in winter, I'll put it in my hot clothes press. In summer, I'll just leave it out in the counter. So I leave it out in the counter, go about my day. Day's work done. Oh, how are you, love? And I come back and look, that's what she'll look like. She'll be so bubbly. she'll rise up quite a she'll bit. She'll rise up a decent amount. Probably, she won't double, but she'll go up probably another third. She'll have bubbles in her. She's ready. When you see her like that, it's She's like, definitely a she. Darling, she. absolutely. So I, I will put that in the oven and boom! So I how long do you bake her for? I generally bake it for about an hour, 20 minutes at about 160 degrees. Okay, and so you get it out like this and, and you leave it cool, leave it cool and then cut it. But you'll see that for wonderful. Like there'll be lots of experimenting with it. You'll have to play with it. But genuinely, I, I really, I'm trying to inspire you that there's such a beauty and romance in it. A good indicator of if your yeast or your sourdough culture is working is have a look at that. Look at the texture, the bubbles of it. The bubbles are the micro texture. Anyway, as you can see, Stephen could talk about this all day. <laughs> okay, well, we're trying. But you see the way there's all bubbles? That indicates your yeast is working great or your sourdough culture is working great. Flynn, will you break bread with me? I would love to break bread with you. There you are. Oh, thank you, Mr. Flynn. Oh, oh wow, cool. This, this is one I made with wild garlic. I picked some wild garlic from the woods. It's really good. It's wonderfully mm. moist. It's fantastic. It's really delicious. The teal goes you this Yeah, this is teal. My son helped me make this. Goes great. You know, I love toasting mm. it, putting a bit of avocado, Very a bit tasty. of kimchi or sauerkraut with it, any type of pesto hummus. It's a wonderful snack. Anyway, and the beauty is, 
<laughs> sorry, if you do go to the trouble of making your own bread, you're gonna eat it, and this is so good for you. And there's nothing like giving a present of it, really. Yeah. But uh, any questions you have about sourdough, leave them below. Stephen will get back to you. As you can see, he's extraordinarily passionate about sourdough bread. Um, thanks for watching. So thanks for watching. I hope it was of use to you, really do. Share with anyone that's a clean baker that might be interested in sourdough. And comment below, I'm learning. I'm only at this about six months. So. I'm sure there's people out there, I'm sure there's people out there that know much more than we do. So this is our, this is Stephen's take on it. This and what is I've how learned. we do it. And um, uh, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Cheers, Cheers. bye. bye.